Hello, this is Daniel Gomez with Advanced Instruments, and today we'll be going over the GPR 1900 PPM Oxygen Analyzer. When you receive the unit, you, it will come with the main module, the sensor housing, top and bottom, the oxygen sensor, purged in nitrogen and bagged and sealed, and the associated cables with the unit. When you apply power to the analyzer, it will start up with a system check, ensure that all parts are passed, and then you'll be taken to the main screen. Currently the unit is ranging and in auto sampling mode. When you first apply power to the unit, there will be a temporary spike on the reading, but after a few moments it will settle back down to zero with no sensor installed. If it is not exactly zero, that is fine, you can clear those with the offsets. The main screen also shows the alarm values as well. From here, you can hit the menu button and be taken to the main menu. There, you'll have the options of calibration, select range, view history, system options, and configure alarms. We will now go over the configure alarm menu. As you can see here, we have the options of alarm one, Alarm 2, Pulsing, Audible, and a Bypass option. We will go over the Pulsing option, which is currently off. You can select Enter to enable it. Pulsing allows the relays to be energized for a short amount of time once the alarm condition is met. This is ideal for low power situations or solar panel installs. If we select Enter, we see a delay in seconds. This is the amount of time that the alarm will pulse for before going back to a de-energized state. We have an audible option which is currently enabled. We can disable that again by hitting the enter button. The module itself comes with an internal speaker inside of it that will sound off when the alarm condition is met. We also have a bypass option. If we want both alarm 1 and 2 to be bypassed, we can hit yes on that. No to allow both alarms to be enabled. Again, this is done by selecting enter. We'll now configure alarm 1. We select enter on alarm 1 and are taken to the alarm 1 main menu. Here we see set point, mode, delay, latching, failsafe, and enabled. We will now set the set point. Select enter and you brought percent or PPM as an option. We will do percent. We select enter on percent and are taken to the alarm one set point menu. Here we can scroll up or down to change the value that the cursor is under. We will select 10 percent. We select one then hit enter to move over. Again up or down to change the value. The alarm is now set at 10 percent. Currently the mode is low. This means that if the auction is below 10%, the alarm will fire. We select enter to set it as a high alarm. This means that if the gas is above 10% oxygen, the alarm will be enabled. We also have a delay function, currently set at one minute. We select enter to change that value. The delay allows the analyzer to be under a certain alarm conditions for the amount of minutes configured by the user before alarming. This is ideal to prevent false positives. We have a latching option, which is currently set as no. Again, enter to enable it. Latching allows the alarms to be in a latching mode, where once an alarm set point has been reached, a user will have to physically come to the unit to release the analyzer from its energized position. We also have a fail safe option. Currently, failsafe is no. However, again, enter to configure the alarm relay to be in failsafe mode. And last, we have an enabled option. If we scroll down to the enabled option, it is currently on no. This disables alarm one, however, not alarm two. Again, enter to select to be enabled or disabled. We can configure alarm two in the same manner with a set point mode delay, latching, failsafe, and enabled options. 
We'll go back to the main menu and you can see the alarm values are set at the bottom of the screen. We will now perform a calibration. We hit enter on the calibration menu. We'll be taken to the main calibration screen. We'll go down to default span and select enter. This will clear off any prior presets done on the calibration and we do the same with default zero. As you can see it will say factory default set. Once these are performed we can scroll back up to span calibrate and select enter. We will be performing an air calibration so we select the percent but we can easily do a ppm calibration as well. We select enter on percent and it is preset at 20.9 which is the amount of oxygen present in air. We select enter to scroll through and are taken to the screen that shows a current reading of the analyzer. We are currently close to zero because the sensor is not installed in the housing. It is now time to grab the sensor. As you can see the sensor is currently double bagged purged with nitrogen. We will now remove the sensor. The sensor looks like this, removed from the bag. We will now remove the red shortening strips on the back of the sensor. We will now place the sensor in the top sensor housing. Ensure the gold contact plate is in touching with the gold pins. Firmly hold the sensor in place, like so. As you can see here, the sensor is responding to ambient air. We want to firmly hold the sensor in place for a few minutes to ensure that the reading is stable. Once the reading has stabilized, say 19.4%, we are ready to hit enter to calibrate the sensor. We select enter and are prompted if this is a new sensor. Select up or down for yes or no. If this is a new sensor install, be sure to select yes. If this is a calibration on a current sensor, select no. You'll be prompted to confirm your selection. Once that has been done, Calibration Pass menu will appear to ensure you that the sensor has calibrated to ambient air, as seen at 20.9%. We will now remove the sensor and run it with nitrogen gas or zero gas, as it is a PPM sensor. As you can see, the sensor is responding to the zero gas and coming down relatively quickly. This process to come below 10 parts per million can take anywhere from 30 minutes to one hour, depending on the length of time the oxygen sensor has been exposed to ambient air, which we recommend a time no longer than three minutes, and also the quality of the gas along with the flow of the gas across the sensor head. We will now go with the select range option, hit menu, scroll down to select range and select enter. As you can see, currently it is in auto ranging at 1%. This is indicated by the two dots along auto and the 1% range. We'll scroll down and select 100 parts per million and this will lock the range at 100 parts manual sampling. We select enter and as you can see on the main screen it is under manual sampling at 100 parts per million. Currently the analyzer is sensing oxygen above 100 parts and gives an overranging indicator. The range will go 12.5 percent above the range and indicate an overranging value. If we select enter, we go back to auto sampling, and we can see the analyzer is well above 100 parts, and is coming down rather quickly though. The manual sampling locks in the 4 to 20 outlet as well, so if we were to go back to the manual sampling mode at 100 parts, your 4 to 20 outlet would be locked at 100 and 0 parts respectively as well. This concludes our training tutorial on the GPR 1900 PPM oxygen analyzer. If you have any further questions on this analyzer or on any other of our analyzers, please feel free to contact us at the factory or to visit our website at www.aii1.com. I thank you for your time and have a good day.